Well, the presentation. This session, the uh, by four of American engineering. In of the classification. Uh, the next presentation is the work uh, on activity measures process change in the activity and research passes presented by Josefina Gutierrez Matthews. Welcome to Instituto Nacional de Rehabilitación and the institution. Un cabina. Un The stroke is a illness that um, has increased from 70 to 85% actually. A middle several artery is the most commonly affected. Uh, its pathology of the stroke involves a low supply of glucosa and oxygen. This event uh, cause oxidative stress, necrosis, and neural death. And so the survivors living with severe mental sequels, such as neutralizing and imparacy of the upper limb specific. Recovery of motor of cognitive function after the stroke required a long period of time and repetitive task training. Starting rehabilitation therapy is essential to promote neural plasticity. I say next.
to evaluate the, the progress of the stock. Physical and occupational therapy are the main rehabilitation uh, for sterilization. Uh, this treatment is limited and uh, their effects are not maintained in long term. Functional electrical stimulation activated by a brain computer interference could enhance motor functional um, compared with physical and occupational therapy. Clinical scales, such as uh, action research and test, full measure assessment of her extremity, functional independence measures, and as word scale, are common instruments used to evaluate the results of a program of rehabilitation for this kind of patient. Yeah, okay. Our objective are quantify brain connectivity in sensorio-motor areas, including frontal, central, and parietal brain regions, by means of functional brain network connectivity based on EEG signals, and determine if this network connectivity, connectivity applying the graph theory, provides information to quantify the effect of long-term PCIFES therapy. The limited number of studies do not prove uh, we support the long term effects of the BCIFES therapy. And the clinical scale have limitation because they are qualitative and subjective and operator depend measures and require high training neurological rehabilitation specialists. The quantitative assessment of the effect of this kind of therapy are. Uh, carry out with imaging stories for just magnetic resonance imaging. But the, this kind of story are very expensive and limited to some uh, hospitals. Therefore, an accessible quantitative tool for evaluating the effect of uh, neural rehabilitation intervention with BCEFS. ES therapy is is essential to improve and complement clinical evaluation. Objective I said we um, did a pilot study uh, with a group of seven post stroke patients. Undergoing uh, the BCIFES therapy and for neuro rehabilitation of the upper limb, uh, especially hand. Each patient signed a writing informed consent, and the project was approved by research and ethic committee of the Instituto Nacional de Rehabilitación. Four clinical tests were applied by training specialists in neuro rehabilitation, and Egypt's clinical recordings were interpreted by the untrained neurophysiologist. Functional cerebral connectivity was modeled from the EEG for nine channels. The connect graph was programmed in Python. And the scripted and statistic for demographic and clinical comp were calculated. Uh, one initial evaluation was uh, carried out, then the therapy uh, was applied, and final evaluation uh, was did.
to um, do the therapy, uh, uh, neuroprothesis motor uh, was uh, previously designed by our group. This is the scan for this technology. Okay, then a uh, graph of the brain connectivity network was uh, developed based on phase synchronization metrics and network connectivity parameters <clears throat> from resting state of the EEG recordings. Draw EEG were filters and A180 epochs were selected and filters in two, uh, two frequency bands, alpha and beta. For each ep epoch, frequency bands and pair of electrodes, the weight phase lag index and the spectral currents were calculated. In this uh, table, we show the, the method. The values of each metric were plotted as a two-dimension uh, representation with color lines to create a visual map of brain network connectivity. The light color is proportional to the value of the metric. No degree and, and clustering coefficient were calculated pre and post therapy. The descriptive statist shows that the a little more um, the patients uh, had a stroke. The ash is very white, 18 to almost 18, almost 80 years. Look for young people also. And the principal uh, type of stroke is ischemic. And the time of evolution of this uh, stroke is seven to 89 months, that chronic stash. Uh, about clinical variables, we can uh, see that patients increase their motor functional after the intervention, after the Therapy after the VCR as therapy, yes, around uh, fifteen percent for the uh, motor function, and need more uh, more therapy to improve uh, their independence, and uh, about spasticity mm -hmm. is no show any. Improve. You can see with this uh, video now the improvement, for example, grip and open cat. This is a chronic stroke patient, pre therapy, post therapy. But in this moment, I want to show a, a technique about using this functional brain network connectivity mm -hmm. to see the reorganization, uh, the connectivity, the new connections after post-therapy. Mm -hmm with the WPI matrix, we can see a little more, more connections. Yeah. Uh, in alpha and beta um, bands. And with spectral currents, with the other matrix, uh, we can now see any other connections. Pre and post therapy. 
maybe this metric is better to, to show the new organization post therapy. With complex connectivity parameters, you no know, degree, you can see a little more numbers of connection with central apparital regions and a little more um, connectivity between neighboring in central and frontal regions. You can see it. Well, in this work, we prove that uh, with this functional brain network connectivity using EEG signals based on graph theory, can you use as a tool quantify and explore the reorganization of brain connectivity, connectivity post BCE FES therapy? These uh, results. Uh, and shows that not degree and clustering coefficient uh, can be, can be or can be able to quantify the numbers of connection and the probability of the interconnection between nodes. <coughs> and related to neuroplasticity. Uh, of course, we have to be careful because the selection of the results to calculate these, these metrics um, is critical and retard further understanding. Clinical assessment show improvement in operating motor functional independence. It's possible that brain connectivity parameters can be associated with upper lane recovery in the stroke. This uh, approach integrative clinical and network connectivity parameters has the potential to be a qualitative, quantitative, and accessible tool for assessing neurorehabilitation intervention and for adjusting the treatment of force post stroke patients. The network will be able to of the functional brain network connectivity with functional magnetic and resonance imaging story. And we, we want to study in these uh, correlations between brain connectivity and clinical assessment, and if, if this can be associated with recovery to better understand the effect on neuroplasticity of this intervention. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, we want to. Uh, appreciate the granted my committee for developing in work. Uh, thank you for it. Is there any question? It's about the information that we have previously for Do you have any information about? How long uh, did they stay um, unconscious before they recover? Do you think it's related to um, the probability or percentage of success that they have advanced in, in this kind of therapy? Do you have the information from the situation just as after the stroke? They went to a um, ICU and they stayed there uh, for maybe minutes, maybe hours, maybe days. Okay. Do you have that information? Each case okay. is very different uh -huh. because uh, about where is the where is the lesion? Yes. The extension of the lesion. The time, the time that when when the persons um, right. go to hospital yes. uh, about uh, when uh, the patients uh, begin the therapy. Ah, yes. Okay. After the 
after the stroke. Well, after it, the recovery of the stroke. Well, because the stroke, I, I think the stroke is not recovery. Um, well, I, well it's, I, I don't understand exactly this, but it's, it's very, very better for each person. But every variable is going to and affect this, uh, the success in, your, in the therapy, right? Okay. This kind of therapy, BCIFES, yes. yes, a therapy, for the moment, it's only for chronic, chronic patients. They uh, uh, had the event minimum six months. And I, I don't know uh, in, in, uh, in the a good uh, stage that peak, uh, that uh, this this is um, uh, this therapy is applied for uh, a good stage. I, I don't know about it. Mm -hmm. oh. only chronic passion. And is, is there any other therapy in which you can compare the results with other therapy? Yes, of course, the normal, the conventional, uh, occupational and physical therapy. Um, yes, but uh, I mean, any, any other in which they measure exactly their advances? And someone else is measuring in another type of ter therapy? Another type of uh -huh. therapy uh -huh. in the literature maybe. instead of BC, BCI, I think. Um, in rehabilitation, no, but yeah. in the world, uh -huh. yes, of course, uh, virtual reality. All right. Um, mm, mechanical. With uh, robotics, okay. okay. With robotics, so uh, yeah, not exactly exoskeletons. Uh, in devices like I don't know if you know the Amadeo. Um, it's a device that uh, substitute the, the physical. Ah. This uh, therapy, PCI, uh, is not exactly for physical and occupational uh, therapy. It's for neurological rehabilitation. Yes. For that, it's a neurorehabilitation therapy, not physical. Or... But you don't complement them? Yes, of course. Yes. Yes, okay. yes, yes. yes. Um, yes. But this this work is to we want to to know if this therapy is effective, okay? And the um, resonance magnetic. magnetic resonance function magnetic resonance. Is the all the stand to measure that? Okay. But it's expensive, and in Instituto Nacional de Rehabilitación we have a, a magnetic resonance that is cost to patients. Then we want to validate. Uh, tools based on EG signals. Yeah. Thank, you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, in this work, using people, uh, normal and normal lamp sign classification or an embedded system implementation. 
Presente en play. José Desiderio. Jorge Rodríguez. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. I am Lutine, Jose de Jurita Rodriguez. And today I'm going to present our work, Python, Norma, and Normal in Sound Classification for Embedded System Implementation. My collaborators are uh, PhD, Blanca Tobar Corona, and PhD, Pablo Cesorios. The agenda for this presentation is as follows We will begin with an introduction, then our methodology, the results, and some conclusion about our findings. Let's begin talking about respiratory diseases, which are a condition that affects lungs and other part of the respiratory system. This is a, a global health problem because the World Health Organization estimates that every year, 3 million of people die due to this condition. Also, is one of the main uh, reasons that uh, for the usage of healthcare services and it's among the leading causes of mor morbidity worldwide. Respiratory diseases have a wide spectrum. Uh, some of the most frequent ones are chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, also known as a CPD, asthma, pulmonary infiltration, and occupational diseases. With this type of illness, some factors are related, like air pollution, smoking, uh, constant exposure to chemicals or dust, and lower, uh, lower infections during cycles. Now, with this uh, type of diseases, some ways that we know that, uh, that we might know that something is not working properly in our system is using sounds. So, in about loom sounds, we have two main categories. We have the adventitious sounds. Okay. We have adventitious uh, sounds and normal sounds. In the literature, it's commonly that we work in, in the frequency domain, and it can be seen that we have an overlap in terms of frequency. So, uh, normal uh, low sounds are expected to be between 100 hertz and 1 kilohertz, and adventitious sounds in between 50 hertz and 5 kilohertz. So, it's a complex task to identify and differentiate them. But also uh, consider uh, the human ear capabilities or higher sensitivity is between 2 kilohertz and 5 kilohertz. So we need to have a really good train here so we can identify if it's an adventitious sound or a normal sound. Now, in order to listen this type of sound, auscultation technique is used or is commonly used uh, between physicians. This technique only uses the help of a stethoscope. It might be mechanical, digital, or electronic. This technique has important features like it's not invasiveness, portability, and low cost. We only need the stethoscope, so it's enough to perform this technique. But it has an important limitation that is only dependent on the doctor's experience. So um, depending on how, uh, how much training the doctor uh, has, the auscultation performance uh, might um, vary. So, uh, considering this uh, opportunity area, as an engineer, as a researcher, we could develop um, techniques or methods in order to help them to differentiate between abnormal or abnormal sounds and the uh, normal ones. So, we could uh, follow two approaches software based and hardware based. In software ways, we will focus on achieving the higher metrics as possible, uh, independent of how much resources we uh, produce. So, um, following this, uh, in the literature, we have a uh, different type of techniques for, for processing the sound and classification. In the hardware-based approach, um, it's the focus is commonly to develop real-time application of online application, wearable devices, or portable devices. So in this approach, um, uh, we will focus on minimal resources and energy consumption. We have to be careful with the resources because we are limited. So following this approach, we will focus on 
finding the simpler way to solve almost uh, with the almost the same efficiency uh, the same problem. So for this work, we will focus on a hardware-based solution. And um, our methodology begins with uh, data. Two public data sets were used: ICBHI 2017 and HF Long version one. From the first data set, we took uh, purified samples of 20 second recordings. These samples were the were, were come from a normal well, healthy healthy patients. So it's our healthy data. And we have three different sample frequency, 4, 10, and 44.1 kilohertz. From the second data set, we took 59 samples of 15 uh, seconds uh, duration. And the sample frequency was at 4 kilohertz. So the first step to pre-processing this data, uh, we filter both data sets using a four-order other work band pass filter with video frequencies at 50 and 1.5 kilohertz. Then uh, standardize its sampling frequency at 4 kilohertz. This frequency were chosen for two reasons. The first one is that it's the minimal sampling frequency that we uh, have for both data sets, and also is the sampling frequency used in digital stethoscopes. The third stage was to um, normalize the range between zero and one from the audio signals, and the digital stethoscope um, samples were considered. The rest one were discarded for this stage. Once that we uh, apply this step, we generate a new data set that contains 349 samples at a sample frequency of 4 kilohertz. For this data set, we consider that the respiratory cycle have a duration of 4 seconds. So uh, the, the, the samples taken from the data set were divided in 4 seconds duration uh, Then we divided in training and testing folders for a binary classification task, normal versus abnormal ones. As a method for future extraction, we propose two methods. One that is Fury or Fury Transform. This method is used as a reference. And the second one is the power spectral density using the watch method with 75% of overlap. Using the Fury Transform, uh, we check the, the frequency response as our feature vector. Uh, its length is about 4,000 samples. So this would be our reference and act as a software-based approach. So we can compare how much uh, our method are close to this one. Using spectral density, we propose two windows, 100 millisecond window and 15 millisecond window. With this technique, we uh, perform a compression of the vector length to 100 for the 100 millisecond window and 14 samples for the 15 millisecond window. So as we have a vector of these very features, we propose um, classifying them automatically with multilinear perceptions. The uh, architecture were proposed one for each case, MLP1, that will handle the output of the fluid transform with an input size of 4,000 and four hidden layers. MP2, MP2 uh, its input size is 100 uh, samples and three hidden layers. MP3, 14 uh, samples at the input size and three hidden layers. MP3 is uh, the simpler network. And in terms of neurons, for, for reference, we are using more than 6,000 neurons, and in the smallest neuron, we use it only 26. So, after training uh, the three architectures, we got the following confusion matrix. The first um, architecture, MLP1, but it would be our reference, 
achieve an accuracy precision on the call or 100%, it acts as an ideal, uh, ideal classifier. Now, with our compressed uh, picture vector, MP, MP2 achieve an accuracy on the call of 95%. Uh, it uh, classified correctly 20 samples from of abnormal ones and confused two abnormal as a normal uh, one case. And the third one, MLP3, achieves an accuracy number call of 91%. So it can be seen that with the higher and the smaller architecture, the difference between accuracy and recall is not, uh, it's about 8, 9%. So we are, we were capable of performing this classification with 26 neurons and this type of uh, architecture might uh, be implemented in embedded systems with low resources. Uh, so the conclusions of our, our work, the first one is that our three architectures uh, achieve accuracies about 91% independent of the, the size of this uh, multilayer cross-sectron. The accuracy were uh, higher and the difference in the performance does not, does not uh, exceed the 9%. But one important limitation that uh, we have its data. We need more data in order to re-enter, retrain, and revalidate our um, our architecture. Mainly, healthy samples uh, is one of the areas of opportunity because we develop this work using um, data set, but a balanced data set. So normal. Uh, cases was limited or amount of samples for training and testing these architectures. Then the compression of the feature vector using a wedge method, it's a promising approach because from 4,000 uh, samples, we compress it to 100 at 14. So depending on the application, this type of method might be useful so we can develop simpler architecture that might have an accuracy near 90%, and this would be implemented in embedded system, let's say using microcontrollers, FPDAs, and in order to develop, develop uh, auxiliary tools to help physicians or uh, identify abnormal low sounds. Uh, that's it, thank you very much. Thanks. And the question: uh, Are you thinking to test your models with uh, new patients or persons to prove your uh, accuracy? Okay. Um, yeah, that, uh, that would be the goal. Uh, the next step of, in our research is to implement this the smallest the smallest architecture in hardware because the first. Thing that we want to know is that that uh, data projections were training and tested in software in a computer. But for implemented in a hardware platform, we have to make some conversions and we have to adapt it to uh, that type of resources. So the first uh, step is to compare if the accuracy it maintains, if it, it decreases, and then after, uh, it might be good to uh, test it with new data, uh, especially if it's from patients. That would be a good way to re-evaluate our system and know its capability and also its limitation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what about the no stationary or the senior? Uh, what is the error of reducing a uh, Fourier method? Why, uh, why not use uh, weightless? Ah, okay. Um, this, uh, well, that may be another limitation of this work. We are not using uh, weightless due to the complexity, 
of its method. As we are thinking to implement in hardware, we are looking for a technique that uh, uses the less computation of resources, mm -hmm. trying to achieve the highest accuracy. And in this case, using WebLeg might be another method. Maybe it could be implemented if we have uh, maybe a, a hardware platform that uh, handle that kind of uh, operations mm -hmm. and might be an, a good way to compare it. So the first one is uh, we are looking for the simple way. Mm -hmm. So we could uh, implement it hardware. Then if we have resources, maybe WebLex could be a better option to handle this non-stationary. Okay, thank you very much. Well, in this book, and the speaker is present, and it was a question. Hi, Sparris, are you online? Yes, uh, yes, I'm here. Hello. Well, the, the next work is in the third glucose estimation in a diabetes mellitus virtual patient with sample mm -hmm. signal and input delay. Uh, hello. Uh, we can hear me? Yes, no. Here you can hear you. Can you show uh, share your presentation, please? I am presenting my, my screen. Hello. So we, we, we can see the presentation, right? Or not? Hello? Hello? Can you share your presentation, please? Yes, I'm sharing. So you can you can see my presentation. No, we can we cannot see. Well, well you can hear me. Hello. I am. I see there's a button. To yes. Compartir. You don't compart. I don't know how to fix it. So how can I how can I see if I am sharing my my screen?
Can you share now your presentation? Okay. Did you say send your presentation by email? Okay. Bueno, pues el siguiente. Ajá, el siguiente. Uh -huh. Quiere que presente el siguiente. Uh -huh. No, digo el siguiente y ya estamos sí. con él. Bueno. Hola. Voy a estar con la next presentación. Um, es presente by eh, José Manuel Vázquez Galán. Le voy a sintetizar eh, Synthetic EEG, Signal Generator of Morphologies Associated with Epilogtechnic Events. Thank you so much uh, for your attention. It's a pleasure uh, to me to be here in order to present the project that we are working that we have worked in the uh, instrumental and producing sign of uh, laboratory in IPN Hospital. Uh, this is with uh, the doctors uh, Blanca and Laura, and also we have. Uh, some recommendation of the medical part of Martin, that uh, is uh, also a postgraduate professor in the NASH. So we can continue with the next slide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The name of the project, Epic EEG, refers to electrons following silence in area of morphologies associated with open events. So I'm going to pass with this. Next. Mm -hmm. Okay, the content of the presentation is going to be this. We have the introduction in order to uh, sum up the keyboards, the electrons of the following at the background segment. Also, we are going to start uh, there with the methodology that we use it and with the results of our system implementation and the conclusion with the future work. And if you uh, would like to contact mm -hmm. us uh, with some of the comments. And uh, the introduction to this environment, uh, we have the electrons of the following, so it's a uh, tool that we can uh, help us in order to. Uh, 
measure uh, some uh, electrical activity in the brain. And uh, with this, we can uh, disable and diagnostic a number of diseases associated with the central nervous system, CNS. And an example of this is the uh, epileptic seizures that are the, the focus in this in this project. That it could be an unnormal or unusual uh, activity in the electron spirogram. In the EEG signals, we have the background activities. Uh, for example, we can divide it into the rhythmic bands and also the noises. Here, the higher uh, rhythmic band is the gamma band uh, from 30 to 70 uh, hertz and also have a potential to is lesser than uh, micro, uh, 10 microvolts. And the lower is delta band, that is uh, from uh, dot, dot one from, uh, to four uh, hertz. And the potential is uh, is uh, more than uh, uh, 75 uh, microvolts. And the other ones are uh, beta band, alpha band, and theta band. And you can watch it, the, the intervals of each one. And then we have the frequency versus power spectrum, and we can find this uh, equation to the white noises that we have uh, one uh, over uh, the frequency uh, in the power of zero, and the pink noises is the inverse of the frequency, and the brown noise because the uh, person who discovered it is the Dr. Brown, is the one uh, over the frequency square. So here is a little error in order to understand this. In talking about the uh, epileptogenic morphology, we have the spike, with, which ratio is between uh, 20 and 70 milliseconds. Then the sharp waves are 70 to 200 milliseconds, and the slow waves are 200 to 500 milliseconds. We can combine it, uh, each one in order to create the spike the slow wave or the sharp slow wave. But always uh, is, is uh, a spike of the sharp at the beginning, and then the slow wave because of the of the natural of the pulses that we created in our brain. Uh, we also can, uh, have the transient or complex mm -hmm. events. The transient is when we can uh, identify only one morphology mm -hmm. and we have uh, in, in the middle of the two morphologies. For example, we have the background or we, we don't have uh, any morphology. In the contrast, the complex events, there are when we have a train of these morphologies or it could be a combination of the two or more morphologies uh, in a group. Uh, this is a little first scripting process in order to understand better uh, the creation of the of these uh, waves. So we start to generate the EEG signals. We validate the parameters. Here uh, we uh, solve it. This would be an error. If if the user entered an invalid parameters, uh, we can end the, with an error. Or we solve it using the slides in order to create uh, only with the requirements that are real to the waves and using the data that I mentioned before. Uh, when we have the value parameter, we generate the waves. It could be single or it could be in the, uh, a combination of the waves, a spike slope or sharp slope. Then we select or choose if we need the transfer of the complex and generate the frequency bands. We combine it with the previous uh, wave generating and adding noise and normalize because there, there are different uh, kind of tools that use the exponential, laser, or higher that we use it. We save the data and finally we export in a specific format if we need it, or we only deploy it in an EEG signal. Here is the way that we are uh, creating the wave generation. We use triangular or also Gaussian in order to create a transient chart of the spike events. And to the slow events, we use it uh, sinusoidal waves. Here we can uh, watch better the transient and complex event. In the transit, we have the waves, and between the two or three waves, we have the background on the sign up. And in the case of the complex, we have the a train of the of these waves, or in a group of, of the more the two waves. The EG band generation and the noise. Here is a little graph that represents the delta band, the theta band, alpha bands, and all of the background bands in order to watch uh, better the frequency of each one. And also we uh, put it in uh, two seconds, start the noise uh, mixes of the noises in order to watch uh, we, we, what is the effect and how this is absorbing the, the main bands. The compatibility with another uh, tools, it could be with MATLAB, EGLAB, and also Python MEA. 
because we have the export performance of images in JPG, text file of EXP, and EG Labs, everything that is EDF that is to be popular in Atlantic Lab. I'm going to uh, uh, show you in a moment. And the other one is to plot the that we have in the platform. This is our proposed uh, system. We have uh, the classic uh, login and register in order to get the IDs to the users and have a better uh, order in the files that we are creating. We use a full stack Python uh, application, both uh, we use the libraries dash and whitepress dash to the front end and whitepress to the back end in order to get a better uh, hosting result in a local host. This is our welcome page. Uh, welcome to the FLP web simulator. We have three options, default generation, detailed generation, and also e file visualization. To the default generation page, uh, we have uh, to change the wave number range, the number of the channels, also the number of the leaf pairs. This is a function that's complex because we always uh, generate the uh, both. And, all, and also we can select the wave type. This is the visualization with Plotly. It's the Python uh, library, and we can go now uh, maybe the images, the events, or the TXT, depends on the context of the user. We can uh, go now. Okay. This is a video testing. I don't know if it's today. Okay. And this is a little example about the page in a local host. We, uh, I start to create a spike and slow wave. And here we can uh, look or watch the other databases that are in today local host saving. I change the number of channels, I put it generate, and you can watch in the in the upper in the application that the local host says that is updating the data. So it's going to start to upload. When we have the the sign of generation, we can run out maybe only the CFC, maybe only the images or whatever that you that you need to your project. This is the M and A. There is more a uh, professional uh, type of, of file that we can use. And the EDF that is going to uh, use in MATLAB, EG Lab. And I tried to do another, another chat way. But we can continue in order to have more time. Uh, to the detail generation, in contrast to the last, uh, we can, uh, for the way, we can change the amplitude, the duration, the frequency, and the noises. And to the channels, we can select uh, the number of the channels, the number of the wave, the sample time, the model. Uh, here, we are going to generate only one page. Uh, so the difference between the last and this page is that here is more uh, specific to the characteristics of the waves. And the last, you can generate a lot of uh, pages, both with, uh, with uh, no, uh, no changes in the specific waves that you, that you need. So this is more specific. And the latest is is better in order to generate a lot of a lot of data. And this is another example to the to the detailed generation. I'm going to create a um, slow wave, then the spike wave. We can change the amplitude, also and the and the waves and the amplitude to the noises. And we can change the number of the of the of the canals that we need. And also here we can uh, choose or select uh, the time that you need because in the last we only generate the 10 seconds and here you can generate more than 10 seconds or we only show you the image of the distant seconds. And I start to create another one. Uh, here we can uh, watch the difference between the M and A and also the plotly visualization in order to, what I want to change to next in order to, to look the, the changes of the of different graphs. Here's the plotly and the other one is the M&A. Uh, we select that because in in our real databases, we we uh, detect that it is more closer to the to the real than this one. But this is better in order to be focused on the on the on the side. For example, here we're using this UI in order to upload our files and we can focus in maybe in only in a part of the graph or in a part of the of the way that we are generating and we can uh, download the image. And talking about the MMA, the compatibility with the MATLAB platform, we can add this. Okay. 
a video for I don't know why. It... Okay, in this time. And I upload the same file to the MNA MATLAB platform to my uh, our uh, viewing agent uh, page. And you can uh, watch that is the is the same uh, is the same picture. Uh, all, uh, also, the MATLAB uh, platform only gives us opportunity to to watch uh, five seconds. But is the is the same sign up that we generated updating in the MATLAB. Uh, Tool and in our platform. For example, here we can uh, watch the spike and slow waves, and it's the same as we created in, uh, in our platform. Yes. I upload this, and this is a cooperation of results. Here we are uh, only creating a random uh, spike slow wave in order to detect or identify the, the epileptogenic, epileptogenic uh, morphology, but in another hand, we have a comparison of the results with the algorithm. Uh, this is because we we wanted to create the most closer as a real file. But this is the real, and in your right hand, you have the created of the page. Where in the last, uh, we can say that to the future work, we would like to increase the validation and improvement of the collaboration with medical experts because we have contact with one of them, or it's better to, to have a more improvement of collaboration. Uh, we would like to create more functionalities and models. Imagine uh, la, as a uh, simulink, if we have the blocks of the waves and if we have blocks of the signals and only put it, put in the signal, put in the background, put in the waves, it could be a better and easier way to create our signals and contribute with the field of AI and ML for a story of EEG where labels that are difficult to access because here we are uh, knowing what we are creating. And that's the difference between all the four. In a conclusion, we create a tool to generate our EEG signals with epileptic motor links. Uh, this side, the spike, the slope, and the sharp, and the combination of this, and application in validation of morphology detection algorithm, machine learning, and here is an adaptive architecture compatibly with some of the uh, most common tools that is Python and MATLAB. Here is a QR in order to, if you want more information, here is to the blog of the LIFS laboratory, and the other one is to the to the page of the main uh, project. Thank you very much. Any question? We can generate in the patient. We generate uh, the three noises. It's a combination of the three noises, but we can change the, the the noises. For example, here we uh, we can uh, increase or decrease the amplitude only for is a mix of the three noises because we detect that maybe in the tool of the instrumental or the internal or the external of the patient generate these three kind of. Oh, Oh, nice. It's the brown, the white, and the pink noise. Okay. About the noise of the 60 hertz, 60 hertz. Uh, do you uh, apply the test? Which noise? 60, 60 hertz. About the electrical line. Mm, well, 60 hertz, 60, 60 hertz. We use the noises that are most common in the electrons. Well, no, it's, it's only one, no? Yes. Well, no, no. Do, do you know uh, use the test of the 60 hertz, 60 hertz? No, the application of this, no. Mm -hmm. I don't know if some of the combination of the pink and the brown and mm -hmm. the uh, white noise generate that kind of. Well, that noise is very common in, in devices of EEG. Better to, to to research it mm -hmm. may be a combination of this and this kind of noises mm -hmm. because these, these are the main mm -hmm. or maybe the combination of this may generate that kind of oh, noise okay. because the, the base is a, a sinusoidal wave and and then we added the, the noise mm -hmm. well, thank you very much está listo la siguiente ah perdón 
you mentioned mm -hmm. that you uh, now replicate one signal in your side of the wing uh, 14. Yes, and it's not. Yeah, yes. we try to replicate. Yeah, you try to replicate it, and you have a new metrics of how much closer are the real mm -hmm. the copy of the animation. Mm, well, we use only the, for example, in the MATLAB tools, we have the, uh, well, no, no, this is the moment, or this is the, the graph that we can compare it the, with the, the main uh, power of the colors. And we, we can uh, look that it is closer than, than this one. For, this is an example only to the watching today. Because we don't have the real, uh, the real data of this. Yeah. Of this, this is only an image in the in the Nippel Meyer electron cell library book. Yes. It's okay. Thank you very much. Yes. No, period. No. La siguiente. Well. We start with the next uh, presentations. The trial uh, towards an, an online brain computer interface based in binary kinesthetic motor imagery paradigm. Yes. Hi, can you see my screen? We can see your presentation. You can start. Okay. <clears throat> um, good afternoon. I'm Luis Eduardo Cruz Carrasco from Simbestap Saltillo, and I'm going to present our work on title Towards an Online Brain Computer Interface based on Binary Kinesthetic Motor Imagery Paradigm. Well, for this work, we present a new methodology that could allow us to transform the varying signals or electrical activity of the brain into commands to interact with an external agent in real time. In real time. In real time. I'm sorry, we, we can see your presentation only in, in one question. Uh, could you repeat that? We can see your presentation. Give me a minute. Can you see it now? No, we can see. Okay. <clears throat> Did well, you send um, your presentation via email? Okay. Did you send your presentation via email? No, I can send it. I, I don't send it.
We start with the last presentation by uh, presented by Joltik, Uriel Palomino Ortega. The work is um, neurofeedback training system to induce concentration status using virtual reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. So let's talk about the neurofeedback system. In specific, uh, this um, pre um, provides a novel system implementing uh, virtual reality.
So we will uh, review some fundamental concepts about uh, what is neurofeedback and what is concentration. Then we can move for forward to the systems application and why, why, why is this so important to provide to the users uh, the attention. And what, once that we review this, we will see the data visualization that the system had recorded previously from three participants. And finally, we will see the results of the TOBA test to test um, the efficiency of the system. And well, what is concentration? As you can see, concentration is the ability to center the attention in something or in someone or when you execute a, a task. And this leads to the um, to evaluate the concentration. It is necessary that uh, evaluate how to the task was executed and the results of the same task. Okay, neurofeedback. Neurofeedback is a neuromodulatory technique that implements a BCI. And in this case, uh, the neurofeedback needs um, needs to record the data in a real time. So for this, um, this is due to the system provides um, a real time visual stimuli to the user. And this makes that the user has a reinforcement of a specific brain activity in this case of the concentration state. Okay, so the way that the system uh, has uh, its function is that, first of all, it is fundamental to start with a, with a protocol or a session protocol, because we need that the results and the data that uh, the system record have a, has a standard. So uh, even, um, before the, the construction of the system, it was necessary to build a database from the participants because the functionality of this system is based on, on, a, uh, on a threshold. This means that we need to recognize when a user is in a concentration state or a not concentration state. And well, for this, uh, we develop um, an asynchronous uh, algorithm to receive the, da the data, then to stop the data reception, and then to process the data, and finally send the data to the neurofeedback app that implements virtual reality. And finally, um, the system recognizes if the user has an uh, a concentration state or if it is not in, a, in this state. Okay, how how we acquire the data? <clears throat> we implement a music band in uh, 2016 that its construction is based on the system 1020 and has an, a very interesting features as a sampling frequency of 256 uh, hertz and a notch filter to eliminate the the noise from the electronic devices and and has a, a, a Bluetooth connection too. And this uh, headband has four electrodes, but due to the nature of this system, we only focused on the four head electrodes that are the AF7 and AF8 electrodes. Okay, and to send the data to the computer, we implement to, to uh, a mind monitor that is a mobile app to send via Wi-Fi to the laptop. And the laptop um, has the Python program to process the data. For example, in this case, the uh, brain waves that are related with a concentration state is are the beta and theta waves. So we implement a butterworth filter from four to 30 Hertz. Okay, um, as you, if you remember, um, the concentration and the attention uh, are two concept, concepts that are very related. So to, one way to measure or to obtain the concentration of the user is with the attention coefficient. This uh, coefficient um, <clears throat> comes from, uh, from this equation that 
um, that obtain the maximum the maximum power from beta and theta waves. And in this case, we use the PSD from the Welch method to, uh, to obtain the attention coefficient. Okay, once that we obtain this um, uh, magnitude, uh, we ask to the participants to execute uh, two concentration tasks. It was uh, in a paper. And then uh, we ask them to execute a relaxation time to say in a, in a similar way. And we, within uh, this test, we record them to obtain uh, both states, relax, relaxation and concentration. And uh, as you can see in the left uh, graphs, meanwhile, the theta ratio decreases in the concentration state. The beta, the beta magnitude increases in this state. Okay, so um, the way that the, the Python program works is in an asynchronous uh, functionality because first of all, receives the data, then stops the reception, and as I said, um, this Python program makes the calculation to, to obtain the uh, coefficient. And then this um, data is sent to the neurofeedback app uh, with uh, the maximum spectral density from beta and theta. And well, uh, the way it works, the neurofeedback app is that basically in this app has an, uh, a good environment. And within this environment uh, are located uh, five activities. And each activity is designed to provide to the user this visual feedback. For example, in the first activity, um, the users can see a mushroom. And if he is in a concentration state, then the mushroom goes up. If it, it is not, then goes down, providing an, a positive or negative reinforcement. Then the second activity is related with this um, functionality. Uh, but in this time, the activity is to cook a uh, chicken. Then the next activity is to lay a rug. The fourth activity is wake up a beer with uh, water and a bucket. And finally, as a final level, uh, we have the fifth activity if that is to open a door. Okay, to select the participants, we uh, focus on the accomplishment of five main points. The first point is the compliance with mental health. And for this, we use the, the 21 test. Then the second point is to, is that the, the headband, the data from the headband can be separated in a concentrated state in a, and in a non-concentrated state in the frontal electrodes. Then the third point is that um, the user has an accomplishment to the to manipulate the data. Then the fourth and one of the most important is the comfort with the virtual reality because sometimes the people feel sick or has a headache with this uh, kind of technology. And finally, the, we focus on the university students, so we need that they have a um, schedule availability. And in these graphs, we can see the separation between to, between both the states, the concentration that are the red, and not, not concentration, and the threshold. Okay, so the session protocol to apply the system, it was first of all, clean the area, or, uh, the forehead of the participants, and then tuning the VR system. So uh, once that uh, this will be ready, the uh, next step it was to calibrate the system. Even when we have a threshold previously calculated from the participants, we need to calibrate the system too, because um, sometimes due to the emotional state of the users, maybe the magnitude of, of their attention coefficient could be uh, <clears throat> less than the other days or, or on the contrary. And um, we asked them some questions about of its mental, his mental health, health, sorry. 
And well, uh, as you can see, we have a graph related to the execution of the task. This graph uh, has the magnitude of the attention coefficients throughout a uh, session. And as you can see, between the lines, the blue lines is the first activity, and the magnitude of the attention coefficient has um, is more than the the magnitude between the activities because between the activities the users have a relaxation time to take a break between the activities and finally to test the system's efficiency we applied the toba test before and after of the system's application and well something that i missed to say is that we applied this system during uh, eight, eight, eight sessions throughout two weeks. In the, the blue lines are the test one that it was before, and the orange ones is after of the system application. And well, in this case, we applied to two, two women and one man. And uh, the better improvement in, in this case was from the subject two that it's errors of commission. It means that uh, in the Toba test, you have to select um, two objectives. Sorry, one object, objective from two objectives. And these is errors of commission that the participant select the wrong one and errors of omission that the participant didn't select the correct one. And well, here we have some references about all. Or work. Thank you very much. Is there any question? With respect to the, the other the other uh, works of of tests of concentrations, what about the the performance? With, with this test. Um, okay, so um, in our research, in the in in research, uh, we found that uh, in this case, the, the neurofeedback uh, is not very common to apply the virtual reality. You, maybe due to the, the conventional EEG, uh, in, in the, that, um, I, I forgot the word, but the performance about of uh, use uh, virtual reality, the glasses and the EEG is so uncomfortable sometimes with uh, with the conventional conventional EEG. Mm -hmm. So uh, in our case, sometimes the participants uh, feel uh, some some stress because when they cannot be uh, able to achieve this concentration state, and they see, for example, the mushroom goes down, they feel so stressful mm -hmm. in this state. So um, I think the uh, for this kind of system, it, it has to be uh, more test mm -hmm. to, to prove it. In clinics, this thing needs to uh, not, not, uh, not be applied yet. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, uh, I found that sometimes it's applied, but for children with mm. TDA, TDH, oh, okay. not for uh, adults. I think so. yeah. well, yeah. Yes, I have a question. Yes. The EEG that you use can be used in other channels, or you only can use them in these channels? Uh, okay. Um, for example, the headband. As four channels, mm -hmm. and what well, we can see in the 1020 system, and the music band has four channels: the A8 and TP9 and TP2 that uh, that are back in the ears. Mm -hmm. For example, if I want to use the FP1 and FP2, can I use them? Uh, well, with this um, headband, no, because only has uh, well the location of TP are this and AF. And these three are the reference, okay. the head piece set. Mm, okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much.
Este, sí, estamos esperando a ver si fueran dos. Sí. Sí. Gracias. 
Sí, yo creo que habéis visto cuando estaba en el sitio. Luis Eduardo, ¿can you share your presentation? Yo tengo que ir buscando algo de desarrollo. Bueno, no me gusta mucho el bueno, que son el soporte, aprendo a la iglesia, pero me gusta Sí, por eso te mandé. Precisamente, precisamente. Bueno, ando publicando en esa empresa. Solicitando que se entregue. Para que el siguiente año me haga un poco de trabajo. Está cargado. Por la prensa de esas chicas. De hecho, que me está llegando a la prensa. Mira, con ella. De todo lo que se ha hecho. Y si me da un poco de trabajo. Yo creo que me da un poco de trabajo. Porque mi hermano está ahí. Entonces, me gustaría un poco. Sí, porque sí me gustó eso. bueno, Sí, pero entonces, ¿para qué? ¿Cómo puedo hacer? ¿Para qué? ¿Cómo puedo hacer? ¿Cómo puedo hacer? ¿Cómo puedo hacer? ¿Cómo puedo hacer? ¿Cómo puedo h
Bueno, bueno, de ser no, así es bueno, es que la ¿Qué es lo que se ha cuando vemos que hay una cosa que no Hello, my name is Jose Castro, and this work title is Glucose Estimation in a Diabetes Mellitus Virtual Patin with Sample Signal and Info Delay. This is the content we are going to present today. Um, uh, at the beginning, what is the pancreas? The pancreas is an organ in the endocrine system that produces insulin. The insulin is the more responsible for introducing glucose into the body cells. There, the glucose is, is transformed into energy so the body can function through the day. Type 1 diabetes mellitus is a major disease that affects the pancreas where it causes an autoimmune reaction um, and destroying the beta cells in the pancreas so the body can no longer produce any more insulin. Long-term hyperglycemia is when the, the glucose levels is above a certain number. Can lead to a complication such as blindness, cardiovascular disease, or necrosis. On the other hand, severe hypoglycemia is where the glycemic values are under, so, uh, under or under. Uh, my results in loss of consciousness, seizure, or death. So, some patients, well, all the patients need to, to control the, their glucose levels manually through injection. But some patients uh, use a medical device named artificial pancreas. This device is composed of a glucose sensor, a control algorithm, and an insulin pump. The device uh, the, the, the device the, the, the device work is is to 
control automatically the, the, the blood glucose level. And this work uh, is mainly uh, focused on the, on the control algorithm. So for that, we need a glucose insulin mathematical model. And the model we, we should were, were the verbal minimal model. <clears throat> where bar x one bar x i uh, one two three represent the plasma glucose concentration, the delayed insulin action, and the plasma insulin concentration respectively. Then the parameters c one to c four are uh, parameters that depends on on every patient. The vertical the vertical minimal model can can be seen uh, as a as a as a model that is the sum of two different models where the first one uh, is the equilibrium point xv uh, uh, that is the basal value of the of, of a of a patient that it, it that has an it in some times and x1 that is the the yet state or the equilibrium point so we can work only with the yet state Transforming the, the problem into a, a regulation problem. So using using the the previous system and introducing um, an unknown delay to the, the equation and in the form of of, of, of u tau and an unknown mil perturbation d. We can rewrite the, the system as system three. And we can see that the, the unknown delay can, can be seen as the sum of the of the original um, of the original input plus uh, an unknown an unknown input signal. So for the previous system, we propose the following two parallel and trigger observer. Whereas the first one is the is an is a state observer with a dynamical uh, observer gain s, and the second part is a predictor of the of the output. Where well, uh, hat x represents the estimation of x, s denotes the observing gain, w indicates the state of the result predictor, mu is a positive parameter that need to be designed. And the case signifies the sending instant in which the trigger occurs. So the following observer is proposed, where the observer globally and exponentially converts to the system three with a convergence rate epsilon for all positive epsilon in the set of the equation six. If there is a event trigger mechanism designed as the equation seven. So when we have the, the observer design, we design an observer-based control, where the input u depends on the control gain k and the, the, the state vector, the observer state vector hat x. Therefore, for equation three, it can be, it can be as follows. Um, dot x equal a, a, a x1 x plus bk hat x, plus ed plus b tilde u. If the observer, if the observation error is defined as tilde x equals equal hat x and minus x, the dynamics can be rewrite, so can be rewrite as, as equation nine, where the, the, term, the term g is where we put as the, the non, the non -known variables, the, So for system three, the, the feedback control gain matrix K can be calculated if there exists in the matrix uh, S symmetric and positive, J uh, constants epsilon, delta, and mu. So such the elements in, in equation 10 is fulfilled. So for the simulations, we propose a virtual scenario where we are using the theorem one, uh, theorem two to calculate the event trigger parameters and the observer and the, and the control matrix K. 
the simulation occurs through 25 hours and there, there is three main disturbances. These disturbances are known for the city, for the observer. Uh, if for the for the patients, for the patient parameters, we, we use uh, the, the, the average values of a type 1 diabetes mutation pattern, where C1 is the glucose effectiveness, C2 is the interstitial glucose absorption rate, and C3 is the, is the interstitial glucose per insulin unit, and C4 is the insulin degradation. This is a, a short control scheme where we can see how, how the the, how the simulation went. <clears throat> well, from the from the patent, the system is is uh, it it it, it have an, an an external output T that can be that it can, can be a, a, a any type of signal. But for for this case, is a, a no mil. Uh, the, the output J that is the the glucose the the glucose, the glucose blood concentration but from an from an event trigger. The event trigger output is then uh, uh, introduced into the observer. The observer uh, goes to the control and the control goes to the actual. The actual fu function as, as an, a delay of the signal like if, uh, that finally goes to the system. So for the simulation, the initial value were the the basal values. So at, at the beginning, when the when the first meal is, is taken, it, uh, there is a spike that goes to, for for normal glycemia to hyperglycemia. But, but the hyperglycemia is the hyperglycemia state is isn't too too long it, and rapidly is is and it. it, it the, and the control can, can negate it rapidly. At the, the first image, you can see the same values, and the second image, the control signal. Here we can see the, the second state, the anterior state, the delay in insulin action and insulin unit values. And finally, we can see the time evolution of the delay, where we can see that, that the maximum value is 12, and the trigger signal. Here we can see that the, that the observer is, is not working at the time, and just when it's needed, that mainly is when, when there is an, an, external, an external perturbation. Where the observer is not working, uh, that is where, where the prediction starts to work. So for the conclusion, the performance of the proposed control shifts are with attenuation performance of the mild perturbations. Long periods of hyperglycemia and, and hyperglycemic episode are avoided. The event trigger observers reduce the unnecessary output signal with the active of the system, while the model remains continuous over, over time thanks to the dynamic of the loop. And for future works, we will incorporate strategies to consider parametric variation to cover a broader range of patterns. The next step, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Any question? You, uh, I have a question. This model uh, can be applied to diabetes mellitus type 2? Mm, yes, the model can be applied to diabetes mellitus. Uh, it, so, but the, there need to be a change in the parameters, mainly in the parameters C1. In a type 1 diabetes mellitus, the parameter C1 is the, the it can be seen as, as, the, as the insulin production of the body. Uh, for type 1 diabetes mellitus, the, this parameter is very short, uh, and in, in, some, in some literature, the value is simply zero, as, in, as is in, in this case. Uh, for the background minimal model, it uh, can, can, can be transformed mainly the parameter values, so it can represent a type type 2 diabetes mellitus pattern. Thank you very the, much.
la bolsa, sí. ¿Ya está listo? Are you ready, Luis Eduardo? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, you can see the screen? You can start, please. You can start, sí. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Luis Eduardo Cruz Carrasco from Simvestap Saltillo, and I'm going to present uh, our world title towards an online uh, brain computer interface based on binary kinesthetic motor imagery paradigm. Well, for this work, we propose a new methodology to transform, or a methodology that could allow us to transform electrical uh, brain activity into commands to interact with external agents in real time. We also shown some quantitative results that corroborate the feasibility of our methodology, taking account the information transfer rate and the, and the latencies of the methodology. Well, this presentation is organized as follows. At first, a brief introduction about the problem that we are looking to solve with our methodology. Uh, then the experimental setup that we implement uh, to prove our method. Next, the a detailed, a detailed description of the, of the methodology proposed and some results for the implementation. Finally, uh, some discussions of the results and a conclusive remarks. Well, as an introduction, when we talk about a brain computer interface, we are referring to a communication system that allows us to interact with an external agent without use our limbs, hands, or muscles, just through the classification of, of our signal brains uh, into commands. Yeah. Recently, the BCI areas area uh, have been main focus on how to increase the accuracy of offline classifiers algorithms, regardless the computational codes, the time these algorithms uh, takes, or the transfer information rate, the information transfer rate. But 
For an online BCI, these are key parameters or key points to take account. These to, to be able to obtain an affordable performance usable in real time and establish a causal interaction between the user of the BCI and the external environment or the external I, uh, agent, taking uh, or considering the response perception of the user. Well, for all uh, brain paradigms that have been used in BCI implementations, motor imagery have the particularity that can be detected in intervals uh, shorter than 200 milliseconds. We can detect the motor imagery uh, before the 200 milliseconds for, uh, after illicit. For motor imagery, the commonly motor imagery used for BCIs is the visual motor imagery in which user image motor actions, movement or force by visualization. They see in third person how uh, the motor action is produced, but they don't execute some physical execution. Uh, and the kinesthetic motor imagery, that is what we use in this, in this, uh, in this work, is when the subject perceives the motor action in first person. They don't see uh, a movement, they feel it, but they don't execute it. So if we consider that the, continu the continuous performance visual perception is around 250 milliseconds and that uh, a delayed visual stimulus or a delayed feedback for the user of the ABCI can uh, could evoke our desirable mental state, we can establish that uh, the problem is that it, uh, there is not a methodology to build an online uh, brain-computer interface usable in real time that consider the specification of a task for an external agent or that consider the continuous user visual perception. So some previous approaches uh, to try to achieve this goal uh, ha have good accuracy in the results, but take a lot of time to process or they use, or they use third party libraries that don't uh, that don't ensure that it's in real time the results or the or the visual feedback. So uh, that that's the 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 gap that's the the point that we want to to touch with with this with this work. So we propose a methodology to build an online brain computer interface that consider the task specifications and that take account the continuous visual perception of the user without compromising uh, the accuracy of the algorithm of the amount of information that is transferred by the. Uh, this methodology process EEG signals and classifies binary kinesthetic motor imagery. So to prove this, uh, this methodology, we use the next uh, test bed uh, that is composed by a, a, a cognitive headset with 20 channels at 500 uh, hertz of sampling rate. We use electromyographic amplifier to identify if during the KMI execution uh, the user have a physical force uh, occurring. And we use a desktop PC running uh, Windows 10 to, to classify and processing the signals. So for the experiment, we have five, uh, five right-handed healthy subjects. These subjects have no uh, history of injury or mental disorder, and all of them were novices in brain computer interfaces. These subjects complete a demographic questionnaire and see an information, uh, informed consent form. So, at first, to avoid distractions or external cues during the training, subjects were isolated into a quiet room. So, they were instructed to perform the 40% of the maximal voluntary, voluntary construction 
in a grasping task. This contraction of this percent of contractions were validated by a dynamometer. So during the training, subjects execute the 40% of the MVC during four seconds. And after that, they rest during four seconds more. So when subjects already uh, know the 40% of MVC, they were guided to identify the KMI uh, of this task. So uh, progressively, they reduce the muscular activity during the execution of the task until they feel the KMI or, or they feel the, the force or the grasping task without executing any uh, muscular activity. So when, when subjects already identify the KMI or feel the KMI for, uh, for grasping task, they they will they participate in the experiment in which we acquired the EEG data. So the subject repeat the KMI that they identified uh, before during four seconds, and after that they rest four seconds more. They were in standby during the resting state. This uh, this state were guided by a screen. The screen displays a forty when the subject have to perform this, the 40% the of the MVC in KMI. And these, uh, these each seconds were one trial. The experiment consists of 10 trials of them. So the acquired data were divided and concatenated into a different data set, the KMI data set and the rest data set. And every data set were processed with the methodology that we are uh, proposing. At first, the data were uh, centered, were standardized to have a zero mean and a unit variance. And after that, data were decorrelated with the whitening uh, method. We use the eigenvalue decomposition of the covariance matrix from the data to decorrelate it. And when the data were decorrelated, we use the independent component analysis on supervised learning algorithm to the mix the sources or, or to estimate the sources of these signals. So we linearly transform our EG data set, the KMI and, and resting state, from the sensor space in which we acquire to the uh, source space or estimated source space. So we, we ensure that the data were the correlated settlement unit variance and the mixing and the mixing. After that, every data set were divided into small windows or epoch that we uh, varied from uh, 200 milliseconds to one second. So uh, from these, the rest of the methodology were applied to every window in, in data sets. Remember it, that every data set have the signals from the 20 electrode in in the cognitive headset. So every window were attenuated to handle in a frequency band from 0 0.1 to 128 Hz. Uh, after that, we use the WG for the wavelet to tune a low pass filter. And with a convolution, we obtain the first trend sub signal from our EEG data. So we pass to the to the first frequency band to a, a lower frequency band from 0 0.1 to 64 hertz. So the filter data were analyzed by their temporality, uh, the temporal variability using the variogram. Uh, so we got uh, a variogram. We got a vector of variograms per, per window. And these vector of variograms were analyzed to quantify the relative tendency of the data. So we have a, a exponent or a horse coefficient per vector of variograms. But per window, we have 20 vector of variograms. So we have 20 features or 20 horse coefficient, coefficients per window. 
these uh, horse features or these horse exponents were used to, to train a multilayer perceptron model used to classify the different state between the KMI execution and the resting state. The architecture of the multilayer perceptron were uh, heuristical selected with 21 input, input neurons or neurons in the input layer that are the 20 uh, features from Hort with a threshold. These features were targeted uh, before before training. We count with a with a high hidden with a hidden layer with 12 neurons that are activated with a sigmoid uh, function. And after that, we have uh, an output layer with two neurons that each one represents a class. If one of the neurons is activated, represents the KMI, or if the other is activated, represents the resting state. So this was the model that we used to classify between KMI and resting state. The training of this multilayer perceptron, uh, we divided the data set obtained for all the window in, in the complete concatenated data set from KMI and resting state and divided into the 85% for training and the rest 15% uh, for testing. This training involved 10 folds for cross-validation and we adjust the, the network weights by the backpropagation algorithm. So to, to measure the performance of our methodology or the performance of the, the classification and processing for, our, for the EG dataset, we use seven, seven parameters, seven metrics, but the most important are the, the last four the accuracy, the Cohen's Kappa coefficient, the information transfer rate, uh, rate that is the amount of information that is sent by unit of time, and the latency, how many time the algorithm takes to process and classify every window. So as a result, in the box plot, we present the median accuracy for the five uh, subjects, and we can see that when we use an epoch of 200 milliseconds, the variability of the results or, or the variability of the accuracy obtained after processing and classifying is lower than the, the variability in the other cases. So taking this uh, account, uh, we can see that the higher accuracy occurs uh, in epoch size of nine of nine hundred milliseconds, but the best ITR, the best uh, kappa coefficient, and the best variability or the lower variability occurs in epoch with a, with size of two hundred milliseconds. In fact, due to the amount of information that this epoch have we can see that the time for processing this epoch is lower than uh, a millisecond. In fact, occurs in 80, in 800 uh, microseconds. So, uh, some discussions about the results is that the evidence shows that the accuracy increase with, uh, with the epoch size. We have better accuracy with an epoch size, uh, with a uh, greater epoch size. But the best ITR and the, and the best uh, kappa coefficients occur in, uh, in an epoch size of 200 milliseconds. So we can consider that 200 milliseconds that is lower uh, or faster than the visual perception of the user uh, is an option for a real-time task uh, command. So we can build an online BCI that considers epoch of 200 milliseconds to process the data, uh, the window, the data window, and command an external agent every 
every 250 milliseconds because of the processing time is less than five that 50 milliseconds. So as a conclusion, uh, the results shows that we can consider the epoch size depending on the task. But if the, if the task requires that the response or the visual feedback from the BCI have to be uh, faster than the human perception, that the human perception, we can use uh, the, the epoch size of 200 milliseconds. So this study contributes to fill in the gap in on binary KMI command for an online BCI application. We can conclude that it's possible to command an external agent every 200 milliseconds with an accuracy uh, over 80%. And we can have an ITR of 1.70. That is the amount of information per unit of time. So as a future work, in fact, we are working in the building of the online BCI uh, to command in real time an external dy dynamical agent in a virtual scenario. So that, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Any question? Uh, I have a question uh, about the another technique uh, that you use uh, to improve this uh, these parameters, these metrics. Another technique to to improve these parameters. Well. Um, Well, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Well. To improve this uh, this parameter, we can try with uh, more more stages in the processing. But that is uh, uh, but have but if we do that, we have the disadvantage of the processing time. Uh, we can improve our our accuracy or something like that if we use uh, every step of the processing into the window processing, but we have uh, a higher time of processing. And if we want to have a, an online application on a real time application, we, we, we take care of the time of processing. So, so I think that it's a, a way to improve some parameters. Okay. Thank you very much. For your assistance. Yeah. Los estamos. Yeah.